good morning and happy friday happy friday this is the last day of the month of september <clears throat> and i want to give a big shout out to all my latino and hispanic moms who are raising their babies and loving the experience baby dominic you are so adorable love love seeing pictures of you so i am celebrating with you in my outfit and celebrating all the great contributions you make to civilization. So today, in our next episode of Baby Talk, I want to focus on sensory, a little more on sensory. We started talking about it this week, and I wanna give you some strategies. Some strategies first to identify the kind of child you have, and then some strategies and activities to use with your child so that you can help your child to be successful. So here we go. First, I'm focusing today on sensory seeking, sensory craving children. Children who are sensory seeking and sensory craving. So what does a child who has these tendencies look like? This is what you're going to see in your child to help you identify whether your child with sensory needs is a sensory seeker, sensory craver in this domain. Now, that child will seek out stimuli in movement, lots of movement. He touches everything. His sound is a big thing. He wants to lick and taste everything, smell and vision. Those are your senses, sensory system that deals with the senses. So the child will demonstrate behavior in a disorganized manner. Like he's all over the place. He's disorganized. He is also inconsistent in his movements. He loves, loves, loves to crash. He bumps into people and bumps into things. This is a child who is falling off his chair. And, and falling down when you think he's walking, going where he's supposed to be going, and then suddenly he disappears and he's on the ground. This is your sensory seeking, sensory craving child. He has um, obsessive needs to touch, touch things and touch people. I know a lot of teachers and parents, you are saying, you know, why did you have to touch that? That's your sensory seeker. He's craving touch, tactile. And then he loves to, to talk and make noises with his mouth. Oh boy, lots of noises. When people are quiet and working, he is the one that's making all the noises. And he loves to smell objects and smell people. Have you seen a child like that? Yes, they are children and they come and they sniff on you. They love to smell things and smell people. So if you have a sensory seeker, sensory craver, your child will be impulsive. Your child would have difficulties with time taking turns and in like games and conversations. Your child will have poor safety and personal space awareness. Your child has needs to the need to be fast and and in terms of the social skills, he wants to be quick, 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 quick. He says whatever and he's done. Same thing with academics. And then he's possibly overly affectionate. He always wants to touch and be up under you and be hugged. Okay, so what should we consider when we are interacting with a child like this? You want to teach your child to cue into his or her heartbeat, his respiration, his movement, and how he or she looks. You know, when you do that, you're helping your child to kind of slow down and calm. So listen, listen, tell your child, listen, do you hear your heart? Or can you hear the sound of your, your breathing? Have him cue in and pull him back to center in him or her so that they know that they're going a little too fast and they need to slow it down. 
You want to be calm and controlled when you're interacting with a child. Lots of patience here. Don't lose your cool. The child is not doing it deliberately. He is just trying to regulate and organize his system and he needs a whole lot more. He's craving a whole lot more to be able to do that. Use a steady, quiet voice. You know, sometimes when I work it with kids as an occupational therapist, I wonder how it is that when they're in the classroom, they're having so many problems. And when they come to me, um, I have, they just do everything that I present, all the activities. And I was reflecting recently, and I think it's because I have this calm, quiet voice with them. And it really does help when you do that. And then you slow movements. You're trying to go opposite, the opposite from what he or she is doing, this racing, speeding um, practice of everything being done so quickly. Teach your child to self-advocate as well because in his school or social environments, a lot of people are going to misinterpret the behavior. So you need to teach your child to say certain things, to self-advocate. Teach your child to say, please stop. To say, I don't like that. When he or she's in a situation where things are happening to him or her that he or she doesn't like. Engage your child in movement activities. But don't just let a child run wild and crazy. Let the activities be purposeful, be planned, and lead to an end, okay? And then teach your, your child self-control. Have him repeat, stop, think, and control. Teach your child those strategies, okay? You wanna teach your child also to um to to use certain strategies or you want to use these strategies with your child and engage him or her in these activities make movement this is one of the strategies i want you to to cue into make movement activities more difficult more difficult so that the child has to slow down so how do you do that get your child involved in some obstacle courses and put things in his or her way. I mean, even in your house, you can throw pillows and, and mats around so your child doesn't just dart through the house. He or she has to stop and take his time to get around things. You know, put some furniture in the way so he has to navigate his way around. Make activities more difficult. That's the first one. Never, ever, ever, and this is for teachers or moms who have home daycares, Never take away recess from your child as a punishment because your child who is a sensory seeking, sensory craving needs to be able to move, move, move and, and be on the go. So don't take away recess as a consequence or, or a punishment. And you want to engage the child in heavy work and proper receptive input before table activities. What do I mean by heavy work? Okay, let's look at some of the activities. Do hula hoop activities. Have your child engaged in hula hoop activities. Have your child on the trampoline. Here is where you're going to have that proprioception and the joint input. Jumping on the trampoline. Jumping and have your child pulling heavy things and carrying heavy objects. You can, you can stuff his backpack with heavy books and have him carry those objects or those books around. Not for the whole, um, all his day, but for a period of time. So he's getting that input to his muscles and to his joints as needed. And then you can do the deep pressure, deep hugs. You can do rough tumbling, dads, rough tumble with your child. You can do the pushing down, which we call the joint compression on the shoulders and on the head. And you can have your child also do wall push-ups or even floor push-ups. That would give him the, the, the um, input to those joints and the heavy um, muscles that you um, and the muscles that you are trying to to address 
Now, I want to stop here with the information I'm sharing with you today on this um, sensory seeker, sensory craving child. And the next time we talk, I want to focus a little bit on how to create a sensory room that will help your child who is seeking all of this input, the sensory input, or who is not even seeking the input to have an environment where he or she is supported and is able to function successfully. Because, you know, we all come with needs, needs at different levels and in different areas. And all we need to do is make sure that the sensory system is taken care of, and then we are going to be able to produce at our best. This is Dr. Yonette on a happy Friday afternoon or happy Friday morning, I'm just thinking of afternoon, when we are able to talk and interact. Send me your questions in your comments. I am an occupational therapist. I love working with children. I am also a skincare guru. So I encourage moms and dads to take care of your skin, take care of baby skin. Check and see if your baby has eczema and take care Go back to the video I did on eczema and see what are the, the, the strategies, the treatments that you will need to help take care of baby skin as well. And most of all, have fun taking care of your baby and have a great day. See you again tomorrow for Retime with Baby.